Okay, uh, the frame is okay, lighting good, audio check. So it's 31st December, it's gonna be the next year in about a couple of hours. And when I'll post this video, it will already be 2020, so happy new year. I'm really looking forward to this coming year. I'm gonna push out more content than I've ever had and try to be better at producing these types of videos. So make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. And happy new year again. So with that said, let's get into today's video. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Yash here and today we're going to talk about shooting in low light. So shooting in low light is what I think one of the hardest things when it comes to shooting videos. And I remember when I first started, I, I was really curious about how you shoot in low light, how you compensate for the exposure, how you brighten up your subject, there aren't no any lights, so what will you do? What if you'll have to increase up your ISO and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I learned from other creators and also by testing out some stuff. And if it helps you in any way to shoot better in low light, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. It will help the YouTube algorithm to share out this video for the people who are looking for this information. So with that said, let's jump right onto the first point. So the first point is to shoot at a wider open aperture. So it is probably the easiest way to get more light in into your camera besides bumping up your eyes. So when you're shooting at a wide open aperture, you're letting in more light into your camera resulting in brighter image. So bring down your aperture as low as you can. Anything below f2.8 will give you much more better results when compared to like f3.5 or f4. That's why prime lenses are really good for shooting in low light because they can open to a really wide aperture of something like f1.8 or f1.4. And if you're just starting out and using a kit lens that may only open up to something like f3.5, I will highly recommend you to get a 50mm prime lens because every camera system has one. It is relatively cheap, it has great optics, and it most likely has a really good aperture of something like f1.8 or even f1.4. So open up your aperture as much as you can to let more light in. So the second point is shooting silhouettes. When you're shooting in a low light environment, it can be quite difficult to perfectly light up your subject. So instead of exposing for your subject, try exposing for the background, creating a nice contrast between your subject and the background. And silhouettes also tends to give your footage a pretty intense, mysterious cinematic look to it if you're going for that. Also, it's a pretty simple way to add more drama into your videos. Also, it's a lot more easier than finding out light sources out on the street. So try out silhouettes. The next point is ambient lighting. So if you don't want to do silhouettes and your aperture doesn't go down that much, so what can you do? You'll have to use up any sort of ambient light that is around you. Try to use up any light source, whether it be a light post or a signboard or a neon light, anything that you can use to get more light into your camera, you should use. You're already getting very little amount of light outside at night. So try to use up any sort of thing that can add more light into your camera. And that leads to our next point, bringing up your own light. It is probably the best thing that you can do if you know you're going to be shooting in low light is to bring your own light with you. It is a lot more convenient than hunting for lights on the street. And when you're carrying your own lights, you can easily get the look you're going for. And something like this Aperture ALM9 is a really great example for a tiny portable LED light that you can carry around. It is about the size of a credit card I can easily put up in my pocket and go on shooting and whenever I need it I can just pop this out turn it on and I have a nice bright light source and I'm not kidding this thing is super bright for the size of this thing I mean look I recently made a video related to this guy explaining why you should have a tiny LED light in your camera bag if you shoot photos and videos so go ahead and check that out if you like so the next point is noise reducing or denoising. So if you're in an environment where there's pretty low ambient light around you and your lens doesn't open up to a wider aperture, then there's only one thing left to do is bumping up that ISO. And I know that I just talked about not bringing up your ISO, but it is a lot more better to have a well exposed, even if it is grainy image when compared to something that is underexposed. If you're underexposing your footage a lot, you're losing on detail. That if you try to bring up in post will result in a worse image than a high ISO one. So if you don't have anything else to do, don't be afraid to bring up your ISO. And keep that in mind, a brighter image will always look better than a darker image. And if your camera is really good in low light, then you don't have much of a problem. But if not, then denoising or noise reduction is your 
only option left to do. There are a lot of third party plugins and software available. The one that I'm using is Denoiser by Red Magic. It's available for Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So after you apply, thank you motorcycle. So after you apply the denoiser effect, you will see that it has smoothed out those nasty greens from your footage resulting in a much more cleaner image. But I will not recommend you to just go out all with it because it will smooth out your clip a lot. So what I like to do is add just a little bit of denoising then sharpen the clip in post. So that tends to give me the best results for noise removing and denoising. So that was the fourth or fifth point denoising so now to the next and probably the last point is shooting in 30 fps and i know what you'll be thinking why would you want to shoot at 30 fps it's not cinematic it doesn't look that good and i know 30 fps isn't something that you would opt for if you're shooting a cinematic looking footage but what 30 fps allows you to do is a bit of slow motion in low light so if you're shot your clip in 30 fps you can bring down this speed by 20 percent on a 24 fps timeline it's not super slow motion but it tends to give your footage a quite dreamy and cinematic look to it and will also smoothen out those bumps and shakes if you have when you're shooting handheld and as it's only 30 fps you'll have to keep your shutter speed at about 1 60th of a second which is not too much when compared to something like 60 fps or 120 fps where you'll have to keep your shutter speed at 120th of a second or 240th of a second which will result in a darker image with already the little amount of light that you're getting in so try giving 30 fps a shot and let me know if you like it or not and also if you have any sort of tip shooting in load light just drop it down in the description down below and yeah that's it for today's video i guess so give the video a thumbs up if you like what you just saw and subscribe if you're new here for more coming videos and i'll see you guys in the next one peace